Thank you. It's an absolute pleasure to accept this award on behalf of my brother Andrew. We are extremely proud of his work. Um, I appreci appreciate after speaking to him recently how disappointed he is that he could not be here in person to sincerely thank Advance for this fabulous honour. An honour he humbly accepts in recognition of all the Australians working with the refugees. This award allows us to shine the light on the plight of refugees. So thank you very much. A big thank you to Jim and Enid Harper, mums here tonight. Um, she, sorry, she gave us the love of travel, wings to fly to follow our dreams and for sharing Andrew with the world. For many years, we had a rough understanding of what Andrew was doing overseas. He was working with the refugees in Iran, Central Asia, East and West Timor, the Crimeans and the Balkans, and most of the last decade dealing with the horrific consequences of the wars in Iraq and Syria. But for most parts, all we knew were very sporadic, highly edited and family-friendly versions of where he was. Um, we had several phone calls and in the background were tanks or missiles and he, I was just like, he goes, just don't tell mum, just don't tell mum. <laughs> so, sorry about that mum. In 2014, I was fortunate to gain a real insight into the social impact Andrew was having as head of UNHCR Jordan. He was the go-to guy practical, the no-nonsense action man, a leader, an advocate, passionate humanitarian who would fight the good fight for refugees, a real Aussie bloke from Wagga. Um, I learnt more through regular video links from Andrew and Jordan to my school where I was teaching. We were sharing his movements and his work with my school uh, children and colleagues. We watched in amazement as a city was rising from a desert. I'm still blown away by what he's done. To shelter and protect 200,000 Syrian refugees, mostly women and children under 18. Some of the children as they crossed the border, Andrew would share, after they'd been walking for four months, usually in their pajamas with one toy because that's all they had time to take. And they would get to Andrew or the other staff and say, where am I? And, and then another, question, another thing they would say that really moved him was, what animals do you have here? And can I go to school now? The just three basic you know, needs that they, they felt. When I shared some photographs with my children at my school of the camp at Zartri and Andrew's work and, this, and the refugee camp, the children in Newcastle said, but there's no colour in these pictures. And they said, the children are playing soccer on dirt, but they don't have boots. And that was how we started a project of hoping to generate some empathy and kindness and doing something for the less fortunate. So um, we put together a project and we were, I was fortunate enough to be able to go over to Jordan and distribute some of the donations and the drawings and our, um, fundraising that we, we did through our school. But what Andrew wanted me to share is that everyone can make a difference. And in conclusion, Andrew's very humbled by this award and as even the smallest of achievements in this increasingly challenging world for refugees is not due to one person. It is a collective effort and all who believe everyone has the right to seek safety, protection and with dignity. Thank you very much. That's wonderful.